I want to talk now about two different approaches to injecting dependencies into a class. The first is called property injection and it is the approach that you will use when you typically can't or don't control how a class is instantiated. So for the app delegate, there's already a designated way of instantiating the app delegate and given that instance, um, you would inject its dependencies via property injection. And here's the example. Inside of the assembly, the application assembly for app delegate, I declare the app delegate class and then I use the inject property method on the definition and I simply reference each of the properties that are injected and then where they come from. So here the app delegate needs the bundle identifier and that dependency is resolved from the core components assembly in a method called bundle identifier. And if we look at that real quick, um, inside core, inside bundle identifier, we can see here that this comes from the main bundle and it executes a method called bundle identifier on the main bundle. Main bundle is declared down here, which simply um, the way it gets a reference to that is it uses NS bundle main bundle. So heading back to the application assembly, we can see that the application delegate uses property or the the injections are all property based injections. Content resolver, data dragon sync service, an array of loggers, NS notification center, main screen and window. This is an example of property injection. You also typically use property injection when you are injecting into view controllers. These are all declared on my storyboard and there are designated ways of instantiating those classes and it will, instead of using that, it will get the instance and then inject using the property. So here for this view controller, it has four dependencies, the content resolver, the bundle, the device, and the factory, and then the champion skin view controller has two dependencies. If we have a look at the the app delegate class, you can see all of the dependencies are declared as properties. So, and they correspond to the configuration in the application assembly. The bundle identifier, the content resolver, the data dragon service, loggers, main screen, notification center, and window. And if we go back here, again, corresponds to all the properties. These can be listed in any order. The, the Typhoon will inject all of its dependencies via the properties. The second approach to, depend, to injecting dependencies is actually called initializer injection or um, in, in, it's also you may have heard it referred to as constructor injection. That's where all of the dependencies are injected uh, via the initializer and the best example of that is down here in Data Dragon. So let me pull that up and for example let me use um, one of these here. The Data Dragon Sync Service. This is a class that uses um, initializer injection. So we're going to instantiate a, an instance of the Data Dragon Sync Service with this initializer. Init with Content Resolver with Task Factory. That is an initializer function that I've written and all of its dependencies will be passed um, as arguments to that function. So here we, we use it a little bit different syntax. We say initializer inject parameter with and then the dependency that we want to pass along. Now these have to be specified in the order that the arguments are declared on the initializer function. So we have inject with parameter content resolver which comes from the core components assembly and also it needs a task factory which comes from the core components assembly as well. We can have a look here at the corresponding um, Data Dragon Sync Service declaration and you can see here's the um, initializer function with the two dependencies declared.